Danny exemplifies the true meaning of leadership, a trait he demonstrated on and off the ice in his 16 seasons with the Montreal Canadiens. Bob came to the Montreal Canadiens training camp in 1973. He'd been drafted by the Canadiens in the first round, eighth pick. When he came to camp that year, I guess there was a big question mark on Bob. He was an offensive star where he played. Uh, Canadians at that time had the reputation of playing firebrand hockey with lots of goal scorers. He was a big, strong kid, uh, lots of curly hair at that time, and could skate like the wind. But he didn't fit into their mold then. Uh, hindsight now shows that uh, Sam Pollock's in the process of building a team. He had his offensive strength already with the Lemaires, the Cornways, the Shuts, the Lofleurs, the Mahaliches. And he was looking for another player of a different type, and Bob fitted that role. During the mid-70s, he developed into an outstanding checker and two-way player. In 1978, the NHL introduced the Frank J. Selkie Trophy to honor the top defensive forward. Bob Ganey was the recipient the first four years. Bob brought another dimension to the game that I think since the award has been announced and uh, he's won it numerous times now, has given the opportunity for other kids coming into the game and, and the younger generation to realize that through maybe dedication, hard work, and good basic hockey skills, have a chance to make the National Hockey League. Those skills followed Ganey throughout his career. He was Canadian's captain from 1981 to 89 and played a key role in the Canadian's five Stanley Cup championships throughout the 70s and 80s. In May 1979, he was awarded the Conn Smythe Trophy as the playoff MVP. That's one of the special feelings I have for Bob Ganey. I had been traded that year and played against Bob uh, in Los Angeles. I came back to the forum for the final game when they beat the Rangers. And it's actually one of the few times in the game where I've seen at the end of the game a player lifted up above all his teammates and carried around the ice. It's one of the few times during the game, too, I've seen Bob Ganey smile and have a grin, almost be embarrassed by what he'd accomplished and how he was accepted and pushed above, shall we say, with his teammates and carried around the ice on their shoulders. In 1989, Bob Ganey retired and returned after one year to coach the Minnesota North Stars. He led the Stars to the 1991 Stanley Cup Finals. Frank Mojave said years ago in the dressing room that the game of hockey is a very simple game. It's the players who mess it up. And Bob is able to take that and give each person and slot them into the role and doesn't ask anything more out of them than their own ability. What he gets upset with, I think, is where someone doesn't perform to their ability. If they can perform to the best of their ability, that's all he can ask. And he doesn't ask more of that. And I think that's what Montreal did with Bob, is they let him play his game, and they didn't ask him to score goals. I think if they had, I think Bob would have been out of his realm. And I think the two of them mesh superbly together. And I think Bob has taken that philosophy on with him to Minnesota and able to understand that if I can build a team, I need X number of forwards who can score, X number of forwards who can play defensive hockey. And I think that's something he's left with the game, that there is room in the game of hockey for a superb defensive line now. One of the finest defensive players in the game, Bob Ganey, led by example. Tonight, we follow him to the Hockey Hall of Fame.